Next we're going to look at beta decay and that's another nuclear reaction that happens when a, an isotope is unstable in case you know the very famous carbon-14 isotope it's very unstable uh, it will decay to nitrogen and eject what we call a beta particle which is nothing more than an electron the only reason why we call it a beta particle is because it came out of the nucleus and it does so by taking a, uh, a neutron and converting it to the proton so a neutron will eject a negative particle, an electron, and turn itself into a neutron. And so therefore, the nucleus will now have seven protons in it instead of six protons. And the total number of nucleons, of course, will then stay the same. So it goes from eight neutrons to seven neutrons by taking one of the neutrons and converting it to a proton. So how much energy is released in this reaction? Well, again, that's, that comes from the energy laws in the reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the mass before the reaction, the mass after the reaction. But here we have to be a little bit careful because it does eject a beta particle, which is basically an electron. And so do we have to take into account the mass of the electron? And actually the way these numbers are set up, the answer is no, because these numbers here already include the electrons in the orbits around the nucleus. And of course, for a carbon atom, since there are only six protons, there's only six electrons here. And for the nitrogen atom, since there are seven protons, there are seven electrons there. And so that extra electron comes from somewhere else. And so we have to add that over here. So we have another electron being added to this reaction. The only difference is that this comes from the outside and goes to the electron orbits outside the nucleus and doesn't add mass to the nucleus itself. So charge-wise, we're taken care of, but the mass is included here of this extra electron, even though the nucleus here ejects an electron. So it turns out we do not have to worry about this added mass of the electron. We can simply ignore it, and we just have to take the mass differences between the two nuclei. And if we do that, let's go ahead and do that. So we have the 14.003. 242 atomic mass units and subtract from that the mass of the nitrogen which is 14.003074 atomic mass units notice that it's less than the than the carbon nucleus and therefore it releases energy so 12 minus 4 is 8 13 minus uh, 76 and that becomes a 1 0, 0, 0, 0 point atomic mass units so you can see that this is what we call the delta mass the lost mass, or also called the mass defect. All right, so we have to convert that mass into the equivalent energy. Again, we can do that in two ways. We can say that E is equal to mc squared. Convert this mass into kilograms, plug it in here, or it turns out we have an easier way. We know that the energy released can simply be calculated by taking the mass that's, that's lost, the delta M, and converting it to the equivalent 931.5 MeVs per atomic mass units. So if we take the amount of mass lost in atomic mass units and multiply times that, we get actually the energy equivalent of that mass. And so let's do that. This is equal to 0 0.000168 atomic mass units and multiply that times 931.5 MeVs divided by one atomic mass unit. And let's see how much energy is released in a single beta decay reaction like that. So we have 0 0.000168 times 931.5. And so this is equal to 0 0.156 MeVs, um, million electron volts, or 156 KeVs, or kilo electron volt. So that's about the mass equivalent of a third of an electron. So that's quite a bit of energy being released by ejecting this beta particle in this reaction. And that's how you look at beta decay.